is going to be on using uh, network analyst functions in Arc Pro. Um, for those who haven't followed uh, my previous videos in desktop and, and aren't really sure what network analyst is, uh, you can think of it much like um, ArcGIS's version of Google Maps. Um, it's what allows you to actually utilize um, you know, a road, a river, a railway, um, or subway, you know, any kind of network uh, of lines and analyze the way you would move through space if you had to follow that network. You know, so if a buffer allows you to fly like a bird or if um, near measures your distance, you know, in a straight line, there are similar tools in network analysts that would allow you to measure distance or how far you could move in 10 minutes or the best route to take or the thing you're closest to, but that would force you to follow uh, a network of roads and then force you to use whatever rules you determine important for those roads. Can you go multi-direction? Are there some roads you can and can't walk on? Is there a different speed you might do on one road uh, versus another road? Um, and so that's network analyst. Now, network analyst, um, you'll see sort of the way into the tool is here. And I want to make a few notes before we sort of launch. Uh, I'm going to walk through the three more common ones here, the service area, route, and closest facility. So I'll make a warning to everybody, uh, two big things. One, notice that it's automatically going to default to wherever you are signed into your pro. So if you have a pro that does not have this as a tool um, or you have not bought this license, this will gray out when you click it and you won't be able to use it. So this isn't one of the basic functionalities. This is something that you have to pay for and, you know, with pretty good reason. The, you know, what they make available to you here um, is, is, is pretty darn uh, complex and, and, and intricate. The second thing is um, in desktop, where I'm going to show you some some videos in a second, you could absolutely use a network data source through your ArcGIS Online account, but more commonly in ArcGIS Desktop, you would build your sort of own from scratch. You'd create your own rules of the road uh, that had you know speeds. You could go this way on this road. You could go that way. You could introduce abstract elements like don't go on this road because there's too much crime or the elevation is too high. Uh, you could build um, localized uh, public transit networks, right, that, that allowed you to get on a bus and get off and then get on a subway. You unfortunately can't actually build your own from scratch yet in Pro. It's, it's a bit of a flaw here. Uh, they can create one from schema. So if you uh, had someone sort of build one and they can share the XML, you can build it from that. But there's no way like you used to be able in, you know, desktop, oops, thought I had it open, but when it opens in a second, I'll remind you, to just right click, for example, on um, the road layer that you had in catalog, and you'd have an option of building a network data set. So at this point, anybody who needs to be customizing their own, or you want to learn sort of how to, uh, you know, take your own roads and, and build one. Um, you know, maybe that doesn't need to be as intricate as what ArcGIS offers. And furthermore, you don't really want to pay, um, you know, the fees because, you know, even if you have the Network Analyst Toolbar, you have an ArcGIS Online account that allows you to access it, you'd still have to spend money every time you calculate a service area or every time you calculate a route. And it's not a ton of credits, you know, but it adds up if you're doing it. Uh, for a lot of features, uh, but just to kind of remind those who've done it, right? I could have come to my my roads and I would build the data set. So for those of you who want that tutorial, um, I've tried to lay it out in pretty explicit detail in the network analyst toolbar um, on my YouTube channel uh, in some of the de desktop things. So I'll talk you how to build the network data set and how to run sort of the um, most commonly used tools in uh, ArcGIS. So, but if uh, you're not customizing, um, you know, you're going to rely on what ArcGIS offers, then uh, let's come to Pro and, and look how to do it. So again, reminder, what I'm about to begin doing for these three elements is going to take credits, meaning that every time I run one of these, 
it's charging against my ArcGIS Online kind of credit balance. So it's not going to be a problem here, but make sure whoever your provider is, if you get this through school or something else, uh, that you're permitted to use them. And, and just be careful, you know, if you're going to do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of service areas or, you know, a thousand points um, for a route network, that's going to eat up your, your service charges. So just be careful and, and kind of cognizant of what you're doing. So let's start with the first one, um, which is the service area. So you can think of service area like network analyst version of a buffer. It's, it's a buffer if we were actually constrained by roads or rivers or rails or whatever your network happens to be. I'm going to ramble slightly here because my internet seems to be slow, so it's taking a moment to load each one of these. But you've seen these. Uh, these are walk sheds or drive sheds. Um, that's kind of what they produce. So a few things to note. First thing it does, similar to desktop, is it sort of creates this sub-layer here. It says service area, and it has a few things. Facilities, point barriers, lines, line barriers, polygons, polygon barriers, all that jazz. And then it kind of in similar pro fashion, you get this little highlight here. This is your um, kind of tab bar to work off of. So let's open it up. Um, those who are familiar with this on desktop, the orientation may look different, but a lot of the terms are the same. This is where we'll ultimately end up. But before we do, we actually have to start finding, well, what do you actually want to measure your service area from? Right? When we do a buffer, we load a point or a polygon or whatever, and it uh, emanates outward. We actually need to kind of pick something that we want to measure our service area from. And so the you know, way to do that is to go to import our facilities. And you know, I'll be importing it <coughs> into the facilities sublayer. And if you have locations already, I'll just use these sort of route points here, and I'll drag them in. So suddenly a field map is going to come up. Uh, I may have a video um, sometime next week or something that sort of walks through some of these in a little more detail. Uh, what this is asking you for is just some sort of extra information that you can either input manually, right? I could enter in the value here, or it would come from a field, right? So if I had different fe um, uh, a field or, or, or several fields that had values in them, um, you know, different for each of these inputs, it would take it from the field. So just to give you kind of a couple of them, um, you know, curb approach is, uh, you know, a small nuance, like do I have to pull up on the right side or the left side, right? So that could sort of change kind of the direction you're able to come in and maybe add something um, a little bit more. Uh, the rest of them here are just sort of the, um, those are kind of attributes, we don't need those. Don't want to do breaks. I think we're pretty good on this one. I think when I do route, I'll have a couple more for you. Um, but that's really the only one to, to kind of know there is, is sort of the curb approach. Uh, search tolerance is just going to be like if um, not really relevant here because I'm going to have a pretty defined network. But if like for some reason someone gave you data and maybe they put the point like a little bit off the Jersey Shore and it was in the water or the ocean, uh, it would just like try to snap it you know, within 5,000 meters to its nearest thing. Um, so other than that, I can just sort of run this and it'll load my route points. It'll take a second. And then you'll see this kind of pops up as orange. And now I sort of have this orange kind of bubble here. So those are my two areas that I'm going to uh, measure off of. Um, I'm going to show this thing, the input barrier for the route, uh, just because it'll be a little bit clearer of an example. Um, but that would be sort of the next step if you needed to make kind of a barrier somewhere. So then you'll come into your travel settings. Um, so kind of looks at first, like when you look, you have a, a couple of things. And this is all using Arc's network. So Arc's going to allow you to do a couple things. They've built an algorithm into their nationwide database of roads that allows you to measure distance travel, time travel, distance and time if you're rural, distance and time if you have to be on a truck, and distance and time if you have to be walking. Those are kind of the primary modes of travel that they've done. I'll let you know if you want to head towards the facility or away. Again, that matters if, if uh, kind of one ways are your thing. And then the cutoffs are sort of the break. So if I wanted to do like a one mile, two mile, three mile, whatever, I would do it here. Um, you know, you'll notice that when you pick things, like if I wanted to do walking distance, you know, that defaulted to kilometers. 
uh, that's not your only option. You actually can come to this little doohickey here and open up a world um, of customization. So let me walk you through sort of each of these right now. I've chosen the walking option, and there's kind of four primary things. You know, those that have built a data set before, and you know, if you want to be reminded, you can always go back to these videos and teach yourself how to build these from scratch. Uh, building them from scratch requires um, you know a couple inputs, but really two in particular, and that's costs and restrictions. Uh, cost can really be thought of in a way as a toll, except you're not paying money, you're paying distance or you're paying time. Um, it can be far more abstract, right? Exertion, energy, gas, probability you're going to get mugged. Uh, anything you can think of where as you move through space, you're kind of accumulating that or accumulating the risk against it can be a cost. And this is where I would actually, you know, say, okay, if I did walking, my impedance, uh, what's it going to be measured in? Okay, I want it to be, you know, miles. Um, time cost, it's going to spit this out, right? The primary metric that it measures me on is going to be the impedance, uh, but it'll spit it into the attribute table for me. I can see time in minutes if I wanted to. And that's costs. And it'll vary depending on whether you're, you know, walking or driving, right? Driving might have its own impedance. You know, walking might have its own impedance. And then you have restrictions. And this is really, I think, where the tool is pretty great. So, um, you know, ArcGIS Online has put a ton of shit in here. Apologies for my language here, but a ton of stuff. Um that are like roads that you can't use, you know, and uh, maybe you, when you're walking, can't use staircases for whatever reason, um, you know, so if you're walking through San Francisco or something, you'd want to avoid it. So I'm not going to tell you sort of all these, you know, the main ones here um, are, you know, this one, uh, the restriction, if a road says walking is prohibited, then you won't be able to be on that road, right? It just makes sure that you're sort of walking, um, you know, there's one ways are sort of options that'll pop up here when you're doing uh, driving. And usually they'll default to some good choices. So, you know, this is one where you could leave down if you wanted, but you can come in here and sort of mess around with this stuff uh, as needed uh, to kind of customize your value. Uh, U-turns, are you allowed to make U-turns or not? Um, and then some more uh, advanced stuff we probably won't get into. Um, you know, hierarchy just allows if there's... I'm not sure how they would build hierarchy into this. If you built it into your own here, hierarchy just allows you to sort of code the roads you build yourself so that like you can, you prefer highways no matter what, even if you had to kind of get a little bit extra distance or time. So that's that. All right, so I've sort of set it up. I'm going to be doing my walking distance in miles. I'm moving away from my facility and I'll do one comma two. So it's going to show me like a one mile and a two mile. Or maybe I'll do 0.5. I'm a one. So half a mile and a mile away. Uh, time, not as important. I'll kind of run through this with, with route, but, um, you know, ARC has some traffic data in here, so it might modulate uh, for at least time, how far away you could get from something. Um, and then the polygons, this sort of tells you uh, standard precision is pretty good. Overlap um, would be preserving each of them individually, so it'll show this one's you know, 0.5 mile and one mile, and this one's together versus dissolve, they'd actually just merge. So there, there's going to be, maybe there won't, but if there were an area right between them where it was, you know, approximately a mile walk from each, they would sort of just blend into each other. And then rings versus disks. Uh, rings, I'll see the one or half a mile by itself, and then I'll see the, you know, 0.5 to one mile as, as sort of a ring instead of... Um, you know, like laying complete circles uh, on top of each other. So we can do this. Pretty good to go. I'll hit run. I know my little virus thing popping up here. Uh, it'll take a quick second. And so I think I'll, I'll end it after this. And then the next video will pick up with closest facility uh, and, and, and route. But you can see it's sort of done it. And there we go. Here's what I've done. I have a 0.5 being in the middle and sort of a uh, 0.5 to 1 out. And so it's used all of kind of the boundaries I put in. I can only go across roads, right? That's why I can't get the same distance up into here in Mud Island in Memphis as I can somewhere else. There's a highway impeding my ability to walk here. So right, doing just this direct shot uh, isn't as easy as it sort of seems. And the polygons that I get, if I wanted to look at the attribute table, 
uh, you know, they tell me some cool stuff. I can sort of see I'm coming from location one to that, from to two. You know, I didn't put a time attribute in here. I could have, and it would have told me the time that I needed. And, uh, you know, when I'm done with them, uh, so they don't disappear, because right now they're sort of saved uh, online, I could export them, and, you know, I could save them wherever I want. I could call them blah, 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 blah. And I'm not going to do it, but if I saved it, then I would have this uh, to use later on. So that's the basic of service area. It allows you to sort of create a better uh, analysis and visualization of how you actually use a road network to move through space. So I'm going to stop this one and pick up the next video uh, to talk about closest facilities and routes.